So one of the more difficult topics that we've talked about, which is nerves, hormones, and homeostasis, we're going to do that now. Let's talk about how an, a nerve impulse passes along the membrane of a neuron. And um, this is really uh, it's a relatively straightforward question, as long as you draw a diagram as well. So what I like to start off with a diagram is I like to draw the axon. So remember, we've got, we've got the axon here. So this is the cell body with the, like its dendrites. But when we're talking about propagation of a nerve impulse along an axon, we're talking about this. And there's the there's a synapse here. But what we're essentially what we really want to talk about is this part here. So with this particular part, let's zoom in. Um, yeah. So we've got our this is a, a cross section, or this is like a bite of that axon. And the first thing that we need to know is that this membrane is polarized. So let's write that down. Membrane is polarized. And what that means is that the inside charge is going to be different from the outside charge. So what this actually means is that inside is actually minus 70 millivolts relative to the, to the outside. So let's write that down. So inside And remember with this minus, minus 70 millivolts, once it's been raised to a certain threshold or the threshold potential, then an action potential occurs. So when threshold potential Actually, even prior to that, the, the whole point about um, action potentials is that you have different amounts of ions going in and out. So the first thing is that there's lots of sodium ions on the outside, sodium on the outside, and lots of potassium ions on the inside. Sodium. Don't write Na+, actually, just write sodium. You, write, you want to write out the full words when you're practicing these questions. Sodium ions released um, so sodium ions released no no so not why are we talking about released sodium ions um, abundant on outside whereas potassium ions are abundant on the inside but inside of what you have to specify that too inside of cell okay so there's that okay so what happens is that when the threshold potential is released is um, when the threshold potential is um, activated is reached sorry then sodium ch sodium channels will open so these are the sodium channels and they'll open. So if this sodium channel goes inside, then this plus is going to go inside. So what's going to happen? Then the minus 70 is going to go to minus 60, minus 50, minus 40, minus 30. It's going to depolarize. When threshold potential is released, is reached, sodium ions, sodium channel opens. and sodium ions make let's make that a separate line sodium ions rush in causing depolarization good let me sit down now um after potassium channels open causing repolarization and the reason why that it causes repolarization is that remember that with these potassium ions uh, with these potassium channels as these potassium channels go out then inside is going to become less uh, less positive so you know it might have been uh, 
positive 50 before and it's going to become less positive because the positive is running away. So positive 50, positive 40, positive 30, 0, minus 10, minus 20. So that's why it's called repolarization. It's becoming more polar. It's going more negative. Okay? So, yes. Finally, um, I guess the final thing that we can talk about is the sodium potassium sodium potassium pumps maintain concentration gradient after okay so let's look at how many points we've got. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight exactly. Um, so we'll, we'll just leave it at that then. So there's like about eight different points and uh, th that should get you maximum marks. And obviously there's a few extra ones that you can kind of look up as well. But this is a good framework to get you the full marks. Okay, so question number two. Describe the control of body temperature in humans. So this is a short question and it's pretty easy. Let's just talk about body temperature control first. And it's all, when it comes to these parameters, you always need to think of um, negative feedback. So negative feedback controls body temperature. And what measures the body temperature? Well, it's thermoreceptors because thermoreceptors are temperature receptors. The so thermoreceptors measure body temperature. And then if you have a sensor, then you need to have a main brain or like you need to have something which controls it. And funnily enough, that is a structure of the brain called the hypothalamus. So if the hypothalamus detects, sorry, if the hypothalamus is told that the temperature is too high, then it'll do things to push it back down. And if it, if it gets told that the temperature is too low, it'll, put, it'll do things to push it back up. Is center of temperature control. Okay. So now we need to talk about when too cold or too hot. So if body temp is too cold, So what are some things that can happen? So the first thing is that you could do um, shivering. So shivering increases body temperature. Uh, what else is there? So you could have uh, vasoconstriction. Because when you have your blood vessels, if you constrict them, then you get less blood to your, the surface of your skin. So the heat is retained within your body. And you might also have pilo erections, so the hairs on your um, on your arm and your body they would stand up to conserve the heat, uh, to conserve the air that's trapped in there. Okay, so that's if the body temperature is too cold. How about if the body temperature is too hot? The body temperature is too hot. There's a variety of things that can happen. Um, so, so not shivering. In this case, it would be um, sweating. Um, so apart from sweating, what else is there? There might be um, vasodilation of the vessels so this means that more blood will come to the to the top of your skin which is why when you see someone who's been out in the sun very long then they're very red usually unless they're sunburned vasodilation of arterioles to reduce body temperature and finally, you could talk about behavioral changes as well. So that's like taking off a jumper or, you know, kind of like splaying yourself out like that to like try and increase your surface area. So behavioral changes 
PG seeking sh shelter from sun. And ra that might seem really dumb, but I mean, it's actually a legitimate answer because we're talking about both physiological, so things that you can't control, as well as behavioral, which you can control. And that's it. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out. Just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.